Well, welcome to Messiah. Happy Easter. Today we celebrate the, the resurrection of Jesus. And I know things are a little different, but I think in times like these, this is when the resurrection of Jesus matters the most. So I hope you join us online here as we celebrate the resurrection together. And it was great to see all those pictures of you celebrating Easter this week uh, as we came into worship online this morning. And you saw that last one. A uh, new, new baby was born uh, to us here at Messiah as well. And we rejoice uh, in what God is doing because God is still on the move out there. So I want to encourage you. I like uh, seeing your faces when we can't uh, meet in person. We'd like to do that again this next week. I want to see actual pictures of you celebrating um, Easter today. Uh, so take a picture of your family. Uh, share them with me by this Wednesday. Email them to Pastor Mark at MessiahTampa.com. Again, Pastor Mark at MessiahTampa.com, and it's right here on the screen. I want to see pictures of you and your families uh, celebrating Easter, however you're doing that uh, today, and we'll have them kind of as we come into the worship uh, next week in a slideshow again. I think it's good to see each other and stay connected to our community, so please uh, send those pictures in. Also wanted to let you know that we are here operating. The, the, the church is still working. The ministry still continues. I know a lot of you all were mobilized and went and egged your neighbors this week. I saw pictures of those. Thank you for that, being a blessing to those around you. A lot of you all are buying groceries for people and things like that. I want to let you know, though, if you need anything, reach out to us. We're here for you. Uh, our office number, 813-961-2182. Our website, messiahtampa.com. Check us out there. Or email us at tnunez. T-N-U-N-E-S at messiahtampa.com. Well, thanks for joining us and blessed Easter. And we continue as we worship this Easter resurrection morning. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Please join us as we sing together our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Our triumphant holy day. and our praise, we remember the blessing of our baptism with the words, in the name, in the name of, of the Father, Father and, and of the, of the Son, Son, and, and of, of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, fellow redeemed, our Lord God gathers us this resurrection morning to celebrate Jesus' victory over death and to assure us of our eternal life and our risen Savior. Together, we own up to our unworthiness, and we confess our sin. Almighty, Almighty God, God, I admit to you my sinfulness. I have not obeyed your commands. I have neglected my spiritual walk with you. 
I have have failed failed to be a thankful thankful witness witness to your your love. love. Forgive me for the sake of the the death and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus. Renew Renew my my dedication dedication to faithful faithful discipleship this this Easter morning. morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. Jesus went to the cross for us, shed his blood for us, died for us, and now is risen for us. In him we have pardon and peace. Therefore, it is my great joy to declare to you in the place of our resurrected Lord and by his command, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. But the pains which he endured, ah, Salvation have procured. Alleluia. Now above the sky is king. Alleluia. Where the angels ever sing. comes to us today, our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. And he will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our New Testament lesson comes to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And Paul writes, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one ultimately born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. 
but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that, was, that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. As you're able, please rise out of respect for the Holy Gospel. This morning, according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and they fled from the tomb. For trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone. For they were afraid. This is the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please join me as we speak together the words of our faith as found in Martin Luther's explanation to the second article of the Apostles' Creed. That's the article that's all about Jesus and what he's done for us. I believe, I believe that, that Jesus Christ, Christ true God, God begotten, begotten of the, the Father from, from eternity, eternity, and also, and also true man, man Born, Born of the Virgin Mary, Mary is my Lord, Lord who, has who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned, condemned creature, creature, purchased, purchased and won me from all sins, from, from death, and from the power of the devil, devil. Not, not with gold or silver, but with, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, death that I may, I may be his own and live under, under him in his, in his kingdom, kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and, and blessedness, even, even as he, he is risen, is risen from, from the dead, dead lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. true. Well, please join us now uh, for our children's message. Well, good morning. Happy Easter, my friends. It is good to see you. This morning, this Easter Sunday, I'm going to invite you to come on a little tour with me. So we're going to go on a quick tour here. Well, that was a pretty crazy and quiet tour, wasn't it? Seeing me sitting up front ready to do a children's message and none of you are here. Walking around the uh, empty pews in the sanctuary on normally what would be a really full Sunday. Seeing the empty eggs, 
an empty Easter basket, and a sign for an egg hunt that couldn't be, and a little recap of what we covered in our Lenten devotional and service journey here. And even these big, exciting words, He lives! Rejoice! Hallelujah! And nobody here to say them. We might have gone on kind of a quiet tour this Easter morning, but we're in good company. That very first Easter, this is exactly what the women were expecting. They were expecting quiet, emptiness, and the worst situation possible. And instead, they found an empty tomb and they found Jesus alive. And right away, their first mission was to proclaim, He lives! Go tell the disciples! Go tell other people the good news! And on this Easter Sunday, where it's maybe a little bit more quiet than normal, maybe some normal traditions and things that we would be doing on Easter aren't in place, we know that Jesus is still risen. He's still alive. And that's something to celebrate. God is still doing something amazing this Easter. In fact, he's inviting us to find new ways to share about him, share that he lives and what difference that makes. Some of you went on an early morning uh, errand to make sure that you were sharing uh, door hangers and crosses with other people, or maybe you egged a neighbor. That's awesome. Or maybe you have eggs hanging in your window for people to go on an egg hunt. That's great. Just like that first Easter, Jesus acts in unexpected ways. Nobody expected to find him alive, and yet there he was, alive with the important message of going and spreading the good news of him with other people. And whether we're here at church or departing from our normal routine, Jesus invites us to be a part of what took place that first Easter. Something unexpected, something exciting, and something where we get to include other people. So today, I invite you to say, He lives! Jesus is risen! And to find ways to share that with other people. I'm going to invite all God's children to uh, fold your hands and pray with me. It doesn't matter your age, just pray with me today. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you, thank you for doing the unexpected, for doing the unexpected, for coming back to life, for coming back to life, and for giving me, and for giving me, a message, a message of life, of life, of hope, of hope, and of joy, and of joy that can be shared with everyone, that can be shared with everyone. Help me, help me this Easter, this Easter, and always, and always, to share the good news of you, to share the good news of you. In your name we pray, in your name we pray, amen. Well, thanks for praying with me and coming on our little tour. I am so looking forward to what God's going to do this Easter and to seeing all of you very, very soon. Have a blessed day. We continue by singing together in Christ alone. Christ alone, my hope is found. Here is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, where fears are stilled striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth day a 
up from the grave he grows again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, as you can see, I'm coming to you uh, from not the sanctuary, but from the memorial garden. Because one of my fondest memories of celebrating Easter, this joyous time, is waking up well before the sun comes out and coming out and gathering with a group of you from Messiah as we celebrate out in our garden that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And typically, Easter is a, is a joyous time right, where we celebrate happiness that's happening in our lives. We gather together maybe for the Easter breakfast, and then we go have a meal with our family later that afternoon. But this Easter is different, right? I think a lot of that happiness is kind of gone. We can't gather with our extended families. We can't come here to the memorial garden for a, a sunrise service. We're not in the best situation right now with this coronavirus out there. And I think we're trying to make the best of a bad situation. And one thing that, that I'm doing to try to just bring some levity to life is um, after the kids go to bed, I, I like watching a bunch of this kind of corny YouTube videos before I go to bed. And I found a couple of videos, and I think I'm going to be able to insert one of them here. Right? One of the, the bad situations that we're finding ourselves in right now is a lack of toilet paper. So this guy found a way to take a roll of two-ply toilet paper and turn it into two rolls of one-ply toilet paper. Right? You can say that he's making the best out of a bad situation. And I really think that's what, what we're trying to do in life right now. We're all trying to make the best out of a bad situation. And sometimes we have a hard time seeing Easter in the middle of that. How can we have this joyous holiday when we're in such of the middle of a bad situation? But really, if you look at the very first Easter, we see that, that the women, Salome, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, they're in a bad situation. Their Lord, their Rabbi, the Redeemer, the one that was supposed to redeem their people, their friend. Jesus had just been crucified at the hand by the hand of the Romans, right? Betrayed by his very own people. It was a bad situation, right? Maybe they had thought to themselves, if it wasn't Judas who had betrayed their, their beloved Jesus, then, then maybe Jesus wouldn't be dead and it wouldn't be so bad. Maybe Jesus would still be alive. Maybe they thought to themselves, well, uh, you know what? <laughs> if it wasn't for that crowd, that crowd that, that cried out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. If it wasn't for them, maybe Jesus would still be alive. Maybe they thought if it wasn't for that disciple Peter, who Jesus at one time had said he was the rock on, which he was, on, on whom he was going to build the church. Maybe if Peter 
hadn't denied Jesus, it wouldn't be so bad. But the fact of the matter, on the very first Easter morning, it looked like it was a bad situation. Right? The women decided they were going to make the most of a bad situation. Right? Jesus had been taken down and not really given a proper burial before the, the Sabbath had happened. So as soon as the Sabbath was over, which would have been Saturday evening at sundown, the scriptures tell us as soon as the Sabbath was over, they went and they bought spices. But probably because it was so late that night, they couldn't go out to Jesus' tomb. So the next morning, on Easter morning, they woke up at the crack of dawn. Like many of you all do when you come out for our sunrise service and you gather here in the memorial garden. But they went out and they were expecting to make the, the most out of a bad situation the best out of a bad situation. They had their spices and they were expecting to go basically embalm Jesus' body. And they really hadn't figured it out because as they're on their way, they're almost to the garden tomb and they, they find out and they remember, oh no, there's a big stone that's in front of the tomb. How are we going to get past that? We, we got to find somebody to open the tomb. How are we going to get in? They hadn't really thought through much. But they were controlling the, the few things that they could control it to try to make the, the most out of a bad situation. They had their spices and they were going to embalm Jesus' body. And I think that's what we do. In bad situations, we try to make the most out of a bad situation as we try to take control of the things that we can control. And for me... In this bad situation of quarantine and coronavirus, the, the one thing that I've been able to control and kind of take pride in is being able to find stuff that, that other people can't. Stuff that you need, like groceries. And to be honest with you, more recently, I've been a little more apprehensive about going to the stores as the government warnings have kind of said we should really stay inside as much as we can or, or at home as much as we can. So I was really excited that I'd figured out that Walmart Grocery Delivery releases their spots for the next day's groceries delivery so you don't have to go to the store very early in the morning. And we were in need of some groceries in my house. So Monday morning, very early in the morning, at like 4.30 in the morning, I set my alarm and I woke up to put in that Walmart grocery delivery order and everything looked like it was in stock. Everything that I need, it is except for toilet paper, right? Everything that I needed was there, right? So I, I loaded up my cart full of all sorts of food. It was going to last me the next couple of weeks. It was going to be perfect. And the best thing was, is my son's fifth birthday is coming up in just a few weeks. And they had birthday cake mix, like the box cake mix from Betty Crocker in stock. We hadn't been able to find that yet. So my wife said, make sure you get some birthday cake mix for your son. So I got it, I loaded it up in my cart, I checked out. It was gonna be delivered the next evening, the first open delivery spot that was available. Well, long story short, the next evening came and right before it was supposed to be delivered, I got a notification that most of the things that I had put in my cart actually was not in stock and wasn't gonna be delivered. In fact, I got delivered to my door hot dog buns with no hot dogs. That's very helpful, right? But the funniest thing that was delivered is there was a substitution that was made. Is the birthday cake mix for my son's fifth birthday. They didn't have any of that apparently because everybody's baking their sorrows away, I guess, right now. But they found this, and I'm going to put a picture of it right there. It was holiday peppermint cream pie. Not Easter holiday, Christmas holiday peppermint cream pie that was marked down to, what, 56 cents? And by the way, it expired in like four days, right? It would be expired by Easter here. And I don't know if the, the stock boy, uh, man at, at Walmart or gal at Walmart was just trying to make the best out of a bad situation, but we certainly got a chuckle out of it. And I ended up the next morning waking up and I was at Publix when they opened and sure enough, they had cake mix, so I got it. I was trying to make the most out of a bad situation. I was trying to control the things that I could control. And, and as I was doing that, I was kind of getting upset, right? At all the people that hoarded my son's fifth birthday cake mix, right? That had denied him maybe that privilege of having birthday cake on his birthday. Like I said, I, I solved the problem. But I think that's what we do. 
right? When we're in a bad situation, the temptation is to, to blame people that have put us this, in this place, right? Maybe you're blaming the crowds of people that have cried out for toilet paper and have it hoarded up in their attic right now. Right? Maybe you're upset at those crowds that were crying out on spring break. Hell yeah, we just want to we just want to party, man. Right? Who cares about coronavirus? You guys saw the news clips about all that. Right? We want to go and we want to blame all of these people that have denied us. Right? I think it's very tempting to maybe want to blame Peter who denied Jesus or those crowds that cried out for Barabbas. That's what we want to do. And the women Right? They're trying to control the things that they control, can control. They have those spices, and they're wanting to make the most out of a bad situation. So they head to the tomb, expecting to have to make the most out of a bad situation, expecting to have to embalm the dead body of their friend, rabbi, teacher, and Lord. But when they get there, they get there. They, they make it all the way to the tomb. They see that the, the, the stone has been rolled away. And there's this man dressed in white that's in there. He says, hey, you guys looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified? Well, let me tell you something. He's not here. <laughs> for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Right? He's not there. See where they laid him? He's not there. Jesus is alive. Right? They go expecting to find a bad situation and they find an empty tomb. In the midst of the bad situation, they see that they themselves, while they weren't in control, Jesus actually was in control. God actually is in control. And God has actually raised his son Jesus from the dead. That's the promise that we see on Easter morning is God is in control, even in horrible, bad situations. And he's promising to work all things together for our good, for your good, for my good. That's what we see on Easter. And the interesting thing is, is the, the man that's there in the tomb, the angel that's dressed in white says, you know what, girls, ladies, why don't you go, right? Why don't you go Tell my disciples and Peter. Peter, right? That guy that had denied Jesus three times. Go tell him that Jesus is alive. Because Jesus doesn't rise up out of the grave for a condemnation of you or me. He doesn't rise up with judgment, but he rises up with forgiveness and grace and mercy for the very people that have put him in that bad situation. The women, they leave astonished right, with those instructions to go tell the one guy that messed up that Jesus is alive, that, that he actually has hope. Listen, as Jesus has been raised from the dead, he has made you and me people of the resurrection, right? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we don't leave with um, judgment, right? We don't go get mad at the person that takes the last roll of toilet paper at the grocery store, but rather we rise up with the message of hope and reconciliation and forgiveness to the Peters, to the crowds, to the people who we might blame bad situations on, and we give them that peace and mercy because Jesus is in charge. Jesus is reigning and he brings all things to a resurrection. This is what Easter is all about. We have that joy, knowing that our God, is in, our God is in control. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we're going to take a few moments to collect our gifts of love that the Lord might continue his service in Tampa and beyond. If you'd like to partner with us as the work of the Lord continues here at Messiah, you can do so right now from your very own home. You can go to messiahtampa.com slash give, or you can do it the old-fashioned way. You're able to mail us a check 
to 14920 Hutchison Road in Tampa, Florida. We thank you for your partnership in the gospel. join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in the middle of a not-so-good situation. Many of us are trying to make the best of a bad situation, and we see that that's nothing new. We look to the women as they came to the tomb on Easter morning with the spices, trying to make the best out of a bad situation. But ultimately, we see what you have done for us as you have caused Jesus to be raised. You have caused your goodness to come in the midst of tragedies and bad situations in life. So Lord, send us out with that message of the resurrection and that hope of the resurrection to our households and our communities. Lord, you sent Jesus who burned with love towards us We pray that you would surround us with your love and above all things, help us love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of baptism. A risen Savior, hear us on behalf of our our president and our governor and Congress and all the local elected officials. Guide them according to your word, especially in this time of coronavirus, that their labors for our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain. Lord, we pray that you wouldn't forget the vulnerable, the aging, and the unemployed, especially in this time. On behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick and the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness and grieve in their last days on earth. Lord, give them grace according to their need and sustain them in their affliction. 
Today, we especially pray uh, for Mark, uh, who's been diagnosed with COVID-19. We pray for Doris, as she has several family members and friends in New York who have been diagnosed with COVID and are taking care of people who, who um, have been diagnosed with them. Lord, we pray for uh, Tina and Anne and Ricky, who are all either have been diagnosed with COVID or are dealing with people who have been. Lord, we pray that you be with all doctors and first responders and nurses. We pray especially that you be with Marcos, a member here at our congregation, as he serves those in need. Lord, we also pray for those um, who are in need, uh, those working at food banks. We pray that you'd be able to provide your daily bread, especially for the most vulnerable in our community. We pray for George, who has various health issues, for Will, who's recovering from a bike accident, for Lewis, um, who has a PET scan uh, this week. We pray for Darby, Lord, for just improved health and well-being. We pray for Fran's father, who's in rehab with pneumonia. Lord, we rejoice with the birth of little Mark, who was born this, this week. Lord, we pray for his health as well as the, the health of his mother. Lord, we thank you that they are all doing relatively well and just pray that you continue to surround them with your grace and peace. Lord, we pray that you be with Dustin, who's being moved to rehab after a motorcycle accident. We thank you that he's breathing on his own. And we pray for Lonnie, who's undergoing chemo treatment, and all of those we name in our heart before you this day. We give all our praise to you, Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way of eternal life and the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We give thanks for all of those who have gone before us in faith and now rest for their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us with Job the solemn expectation to cheer us our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our resurrected Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, we continue as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. We're actually going to sing it, and this was recorded a few years ago by Messiah's Choir. So we sing the Lord's Prayer together.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Well, as you're able, let's all stand and sing this closing hymn together. Now all the vault of heaven resounds. Resounds in praise of love that still abounds. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Sing choirs of angels loud and clear. Repeat their song of glory here. Christ has triumphed, Christ has triumphed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Eternal is the gift He brings, therefore our heart with rapture sings. Christ has triumphed, He is living. Now still he comes to give us life, and by his presence stills all strife. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. We'll go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Good morning, Messiah friends, and happy Easter. It is good to be with you. We normally would not have a family Sunday school lesson on Easter Sunday because of all the other activities we have going on, but since this year, there is so much that we can't do in person, we decided to go ahead and offer one more chance to gather together around God's word, to uh, study it together, to take a little bit of a closer look at our Lenten theme that we've been focusing on, and to just tie it all together. And so we'd invite you to uh, join us for this time of taking a closer look at uh, God's Word. Throughout the uh, season of Lent, we've taken a look at the idea of Jesus died by my hand for my sake. And we looked at a variety of different Bible characters and their experience with Jesus. And uh, so today we kind of tie that together. One of the people that we took a look at throughout our uh, season was a guy by the name of Peter, a disciple of Jesus, who was a follower of Jesus, who often had a lot of good things that took place, but uh, wasn't perfect and had some things that weren't so great take place as well. And so we're going to dig a little bit deeper into uh, Peter's story today. Have any of you ever messed up? Has there ever been a time where you let someone down? Or maybe somebody has let you down? What was their response when you messed up? What was their response? Well, Peter is not unfamiliar with letting someone down. However, what he experiences is a very different response than what we might expect. So we start today in Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 to 75. I'd invite you to pause this video and grab a Bible, or if you're more comfortable uh, listening while I read along, that's fine too. But to take a little bit of a deeper look here, this is right after Jesus is arrested and he is on trial. 
and Peter's kind of hanging out in the courtyard here. And so we're going to see what happens in Matthew 26 with our friend Peter. It says, Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, You were one of those with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied, this time with an oath. I don't even know the man, he said. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, You must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter swore, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Deny that you even know me. And he wept, went away and wept or cried bitterly. Oh, Peter letting Jesus down. Kind of a harsh thing to face. But what we find out as we take a look at the rest of Peter's story is that God loves us even when we mess up. Humans might have a different response, but Jesus doesn't have a typical response. And it's a response we want to look at on this Easter Sunday because this is what Jesus is all about. So again, I'd invite you to pause while you flip through your Bible to the right place or just listen and follow along as I read. We're going to take a look at John chapter 21, verses 1 through 9, and then 17 through 15, or 15 through 17. It says, Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were with Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I am going fishing. We will come too, they said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples could not see who he was. He called out, Fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will get some. So they did, and they could not haul in the net because of there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, jumped into the water, and headed to shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were a hundred yards from shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Jesus could have written off Peter and said, you denied me three times. I have no more use for you. And instead, he took the time to restore Peter three times, just as the number of times that Peter had denied him. God loves us when we mess up. He loved Peter. Throughout this holy week and throughout this Lenten season, we looked at Jesus dying by my hand and your hand and for our sake. And uh, over this weekend, we were invited and encouraged to put together a little person like this. Uh, this one looks a little bit like me and has some of our different sins and things that we do wrong on it. We were invited to 
put that in and uh, put it near our cross so that we could be reminded that it was our sins that put Jesus there. But justice with Peter, Jesus doesn't hold sin against us. When we mess up, he loves us, and he invites us to crumple up and get rid of that sinful nature. You see, Easter is about Jesus restoring that which is broken, giving forgiveness where it isn't deserved, bringing hope where there is hopelessness, bringing life where there should be death, and bringing renewed chances. Peter was somebody that became a fisher of men, somebody that fed Jesus lambs and was a great missionary for Jesus, telling people about all the good that Jesus had done. Talking about he, Peter, had been a sinner who had denied Jesus, and yet Jesus gave him chance after chance, gave him love and forgiveness because God loved him. Jesus loved him even when he messed up. And he does the same for me, and he does the same for you. We can try and hold on to that sinful mess, but Jesus invites us to leave it here at the cross and with his death and resurrection to release it and know that God loves us, that God gives us renewed chances and that he loves us even when we mess up. Our Bible verse, our theme verse for today is from Psalm 86.15. It tells us this, that God will never leave us, even when we mess up. Our verse, Psalm 86, 15 says, But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. Slow to angry and filled with unfailing love. Well, others might have a different reaction when we mess up. But God, through Jesus, is slow to anger, putting that anger and pain on Jesus instead of us, and giving us second chances, giving us love where it's not deserved. That's a message for Easter, for today, and for every day. We hope that you will take a chance and uh, dig a little bit deeper by looking at these lessons, a little these Bible passages a little more in depth. In your email this week, there was a great a set of activities to maybe hit this point home. There's a great family relay you can do with supplies you already have on hand. Uh, there's also a fun little craft project using what, some uh, Play-Doh if you've already got some on hand. You can make some salt, though, with flour and salt and some water and mix it together. To remind us of our theme verse, make a little snail. God is slow to anger and make a heart, and put our, our snail on our heart that God is slow to anger and abounding in unfailing love. Well, we hope you will take a chance to do those activities this week, to be reminded of how much God loves you, and the joy that is Easter because of what Jesus has done, how he has come to restore us and to love us even when we mess up. We look forward to uh, seeing you again soon and checking in throughout this uh, Easter week. And uh, be blessed. We'll see you soon.